Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another weekly WW meal prep. Boy, do I have a lot to show you in this week's meal prep. I'm going to be prepping my breakfast, my lunches, I'm going to be making a muffin, and then I'm also going to be making Skinny Kitchen Ranch, Skinny-ish Dish crock pot Marinara, and I'm gonna be shredding some chicken out of my Instant Pot. So it is going to be a busy, busy meal prep day. So if you wanna see everything that I'm going to be having for breakfast, lunch, snacks, and a couple extra recipes thrown your way, just keep watching. So the first thing I'm gonna do this morning is get some chicken going in my Instant Pot. I need shredded chicken for both my chicken fried rice for my lunches as well as a dinner. So I will typically go ahead and just cook my chicken in my Instant Pot only because it is quick and easy and the cleanup is super easy. You will notice that I did not put any liquid in this time because my chicken is still mostly frozen, so it will have liquid as it starts to de-thaw or thaw in the cooking process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my Instant Pot going, get my chicken cooked, and then I'm gonna show you again my trick for shredding chicken that makes it super easy. I just pulled my chicken out of the Instant Pot now the best way to shred chicken, believe it or not, is using your hand mixer. I have shown this in the past, but I wanted to show you guys, those of you that are new, one more time. So you're gonna want your chicken in a rather large bowl because it is going to somewhat fling chicken around. You're just going to turn on your mixer and you're just going to bring it through all of your pieces of chicken. And literally, you guys, in a matter of minutes, you will have perfectly shredded chicken every single time so look at that look at how perfectly shredded that is and literally you just bring it throughout all of the chicken in your bowl and voila you have shredded chicken and there's your shredded chicken so what i do is i normally put it in a storage bowl pop a lid on it and then it is ready to go for meal prep for the week so again i'm going to need this in my lunch prep as well as for a dinner recipe it just saves you a lot of time if you just pre-prep pre-shred your chicken Next, I'm going to get started on my skinniest dish crock pot marinara. This is my all time favorite marinara in the world. It is zero smart points, no matter how much you have. It is so easy. You just pop it into your crock pot, and at the end of the day, you have marinara. So, let me show you what is in this recipe. So, you're going to need two cans of petite diced tomatoes. I have found that it is worth the investment on the hunts. It makes the marinara much better than any other brand, generic or other brand name. So I highly recommend picking up the hunts. You're also going to need three cans of crushed tomatoes, some garlic, and quite a few spices. So you're going to need some ground black pepper, some onion. I'm gonna go ahead and use minced onion because I like the smaller pieces in my marinara, some oregano, some basil, some red pepper flakes, and some salt. So I'm gonna get everything into my crock pot and then I will show you what the marinara looks like before we get it started cooking. So here is everything in the crock pot marinara. So I have my crushed tomatoes, my petite diced, my minced onion, basil, pepper, red pepper flakes. I did not put very much because we don't really like spicy. I've got some pink Himalayan sea salt, and I can't remember what this is. Oh, oregano and minced garlic. So there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on low, and I'm going to let this cook the entire day. And then when it is done, I will show you guys how I jar it up and store it. All right, so here is my completed marinara. Look at that, you guys, yum. So it would that batch made two full-size 32, I believe, ounce ball jars, and it also made two smaller containers. I do like to have smaller containers available only because sometimes I want it just for pizza. I don't want a whole 32 ounce or regular size jar of marinara sauce. So this is one recipe. I will give you a tip. If you are going to freeze it like I do, make sure that you leave at least an inch from the top of your container so that it has a chance to expand when you freeze it. So four containers out of that batch of marinara. I'm just gonna pop these into my freezer once they are cooled, and then you just pull them out the night before and then they defrost, and you have absolutely perfect marinara every single time. For breakfast this week, I'm super excited. I am making copycat Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole. 
Who doesn't love Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole? Seriously, it's the best. But I am going to modify it and make it WW friendly. Super, super excited for this breakfast. So here's what you need for the casserole. You're going to need some nonstick cooking spray, some salt, minced onion, pepper, low fat or fat free cream of chicken soup, reduced fat sour cream, light butter, frozen shredded hash brown potatoes, and then I'm gonna do a mix of fat free shredded cheese and Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella. I do want it to be a little bit more cheesy like Cracker Barrel, so I'm gonna do a mix of the fat free and the light mozzarella. So let's get started on our Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole. So the first thing we need to do for our Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole is we're going to take our nonstick cooking spray and we are going to coat the entire nine by 13 baking dish. And then to that, we're gonna go ahead and add our entire bag of hash browns. The recipe actually calls for a little bit more than this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add this one bag. It'll make it really easy to figure out the points that way. So you're just going to, to spread that out as evenly as possible in the bottom of your casserole dish. So you are going to want your hash browns to be almost all the way thawed so that you can break them apart and spread them out. And then you wanna just give them a nice push down and then that way you're making sure that you've kind of got that nice hash brown base for your cast. Once you've pushed down your hash brown potatoes, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper and season those. So go ahead and do some salt and some pepper as much as you'd like, just to add a little bit of flavor to your hash brown casserole. And then next up, we are actually going to be putting our butter into the microwave. This is four ounces of light butter. We're gonna get this in the microwave. Next, you're gonna go ahead and pull your melted butter out of the microwave. And to that, we are going to be adding eight ounces of light sour cream. And everything can just go into this bowl here. I went ahead and measured out the sour cream on my food scale along with the butter. So go ahead and add your sour cream and then you're going to add one half of a cup of minced onions. Give that a quick stir. And then lastly, you're gonna go ahead and add your can of cream of chicken soup. Give this a nice mixture or a nice mix and then we're gonna pour this over the top of our casserole. Once you get everything all mixed together, you can see that I got a bigger bowl so Pro tip, get a bigger bowl. You're gonna take your hash brown mixture and to that, we're gonna go ahead and add all of our soup, sour cream, butter and onion mixture to the top. We're gonna spread it out nice and evenly. And then the last step is we're gonna add our cheese. So this is actually a very simple recipe to make. And this recipe calls for 10 servings. I'm gonna input everything into the recipe builder. And when I plate it up, I'll let you guys know how many servings I decided to do and what the smart points were. So get that nice and spread out evenly over the top of your hash brown mixture. This looks so good. It's crazy, I would have never thought this is how they made their hash brown casserole using chicken soup. But it is, so there we go. And then lastly, we are gonna go ahead and add two cups of cheese. You can see here that I have a little bit of the Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella, one cup of that. And then I have one cup of fat free. So I'm just going to evenly put it out over the top of my casserole. I wanna get a little bit of both cheeses over the top. And again, I did that to try to save on some points by using the fat-free cheese because it is zero smart points versus the Trader Joe's Light, Light Mozzarella is one smart point per ounce. So that should allow us to save a little bit of smart points, but we'll still get that nice cheesy texture from the Trader Joe's Light Shredded Mozzarella. So look at that, you guys, yum. This is going to go in the oven at 350 until it is completely cooked through. So anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. So I will be back with the magic of YouTube to show you our completed casserole. I just pulled the Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole out of the oven. Look at this, you guys, yum. It is so cheesy, 
so delicious looking. I cannot wait. I'm going to let this cool and then I'll cut this, put it into my meal prep container with my bacon and eggs and show you what my completed breakfast for the week are going to be looking like. But this, you guys, this is comfort food for breakfast for sure. So here's the casserole. I did go ahead and cut it into 10 servings. I did just have one serving for lunch. It was phenomenal. You guys, this tastes just like the Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole literally just like the casserole so there is a total of five servings left and then over here here's what i'm having for breakfast so there is one serving of the cracker barrel hash brown casserole i have two scrambled eggs and two strips of center cut bacon neither the bacon or eggs are cooked all the way through and that is a tip for you guys do not cook your eggs and bacon all the way through so when you warm them up it finishes the cooking process and the, the eggs aren't spongy and the bacon isn't hard as a rock. So that is my breakfast with the casserole, the eggs and the bacon for four days. I'm, you guys, I'm so excited. I love this casserole at Cracker Barrel and I'm telling you, this is literally just as good. So the casserole in five, is five smart points for one tenth of the casserole. So this is five smart points, two slices of my center cut bacon is one, my eggs are zero. I have some grapes destemmed and washed, which is also zero. So my breakfast is a total of six smart points for all of this food, all of this Cracker Barrel food. For part of my lunches this week, I'm going to be making chicken fried rice using a mixture of both cauliflower rice and regular rice to lower the smart points. I'm gonna pair this with some wontons. I'm so excited. So let me show you what I am putting into my chicken fried rice. So first you're going to need some sort of rice, about eight ounces of brown or white rice. I'm omitting the olive oil and instead I'm gonna use olive, oh, I'm sorry, avocado oil spray or nonstick cooking spray. You're going to need some light soy sauce, some sesame oil, some eggs, some minced onion or very finely chopped onion, some ground ginger, minced garlic, green onions, mixed vegetables, bacon, and cauliflower rice. I'm gonna go ahead and use two bags of the cauliflower medley, but you could just use plain cauliflower rice as well because you are going to be adding in some mixed vegetables. And then you're going to need some shredded chicken. So let's get started on our fried rice. So the first thing we're gonna do to get our fried rice going is I've got quite a large pan here because everything is going to be cooked in this one pan. So I'm going to spray it really well with my avocado oil spray. So I'll get it nice and sprayed. And then to that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my minced garlic. I'm gonna let it cook down for just a few seconds until it becomes fragrant. And then we will go ahead and add in our crumbled up bacon. I did just go ahead and cook this in the microwave. And then I'm going to be using minced onion. So I'll be adding in the minced onion as well. Once your garlic has become fragrant and you add in your bacon and your onion, we're gonna go ahead and add in our shredded chicken. So you want about a cup or so of shredded chicken. Chicken is zero points on freestyle, so feel free to add as much as you would like. And then we're also going to add in our two bags of rice cauliflower medley. So you wanna add that in. You can add it in frozen, it's no problem at all. So go ahead and add your two bags of riced cauliflower. And then lastly, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna add in one cup of rice. So I have one cup of cooked rice. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in. Give this a nice big stir and we're gonna let it cook down over medium high heat for a while. Then we're gonna pump it up to high heat to get it nice and brown and crispy like fried rice. Lastly, while it's cooking, you're gonna go ahead and add in your mixed vegetables. And we're gonna let this cook down till everything is nice and warmed up and partially cooked. And then we'll go ahead and do that cranking up of the heat. Once your cauliflower and rice, fried rice starts to cook down, go ahead and crank up the heat on your stove to high. And we're gonna let this cook until it is browning and crispy. And then we're gonna add in the last few ingredients and we are done. This is a really, really easy recipe and it smells amazing. 
once your fried rice starts to get nice and crispy go ahead and make a hole in the middle and add in your two eggs we're gonna go ahead and let those scramble in mix that in with the rest of our rice and that'll give really the ultimate fried rice fried rice always has eggs in it so you're just gonna get that all nice and mixed throughout your rice we are very very steamy and then we'll add the last few ingredients soy sauce sesame oil and ginger once your egg gets nice and scrambled in you're gonna go ahead and add in some soy sauce you can add it into your liking. I prefer quite a bit of soy sauce in my fried rice. You can always taste it and add more if needed. And then we're also going to go ahead and add in one tablespoon of sesame oil. You can't omit this, but I think it gives a really nice flavor to our fried rice. It definitely makes it a lot more authentic tasting. So again, one tablespoon of sesame oil. And then lastly, you're gonna go ahead and add in some ground ginger. Give this a good stir, let it cook down for just a few more minutes to let those flavors melt, and then your fried rice is done. And there is our fried rice. Look at that. I had a little taste of this. This is better than Chinese food fried rice, and it is mostly cauliflower rice. That is crazy to me. Absolutely delicious. This huge bowl is only four servings. So let me go ahead and get the wontons cooked. I'll fill my meal prep containers, and I'll show you my entire lunch and show you the smart points. This is going to be a lot of food for really, really low smart points. Also for my lunches this week, I'm going to be making wontons in my air fryer. I am modifying an egg roll recipe, so I'm actually going to just list the recipe that I did down in the description box below. It is very modified because I wasn't able to find egg roll wrappers. So let me show you what I'm going to be putting into my wontons. So first, I'm gonna be adding in some 93.7 lean ground turkey. You can also use 99% fat free. But because I have chicken in my cauliflower fried rice, I do not want to have a second zero point protein. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one that has some points. You're also going to need some wonton wrappers, some shredded cabbage, some julienne or shredded carrots, some sort of cooking spray, ground ginger, and also some garlic powder. So let's start putting these wontons together. So for our wontons, I have added one pound of the 93.7 lean ground turkey here to my bowl. To that, I'm going to be adding some garlic powder. I just want to season my meat a little bit before I roll it into my wonton wrappers. I'm also going to go ahead and add in some ground ginger. And then I'm going to add in just some coleslaw mix and some julienne carrots. So this is just gonna add just that little bit of veggies to the mix. So go ahead and add in as much as you want. Remember your wrappers are fairly small, so you don't wanna go too crazy on your filling ingredients because you won't be able to fit them in the little wrapper. And then we're gonna add in just some julienne carrots as well. And then you're gonna put your hands in the mix, guys, and you're gonna mix this all together. Mix your turkey in with your cabbage and your carrots, as well as in with your garlic powder and your ginger. And you're gonna get this nice and mixed together. And then we are going to start filling our wonton wrappers. So you can modify this recipe and add whatever you want to the filling of your wontons. I'm just trying to keep them low point because I am also having that cauliflower fried rice, which I am stoked about, along with my wontons. So get that nice and mixed up and then you're ready to start rolling into your wonton wrapper. All right, once you are ready to fill your wrappers, you're gonna go ahead and grab out your wonton wrappers. I'm going to have four wontons each day. So super easy, go ahead and lay your wonton wrapper out flat. You're also going to wanna to have a little bit of water on hand. And here I have my tray for my air fryer. So you've gotta watch the amount of filling that you're putting into your wontons. You don't wanna to do too much or you won't be able to fold them up. So that's about the perfect amount of filling in your wonton. And then you're basically going to just simply fold up all of your edges to combine your filling right into the middle there. And then you're going to take your little bit of water and you're going to dab it on your fold 
piece of your wonton and then there you have it you're going to lay it face side down onto your tray or into your air fryer basket so that it doesn't come open and then when they're done you can flip them over so you're just going to repeat that process until you have just the right amount of wontons so i'm actually prepping for four days because i'm actually off of work on tuesday so i need to make sure that i have a total of 16 wontons because i want to make sure that i have four available to me each day that I'm going to pair with my fried rice. So super easy. You just got to be careful uh, when you're folding and filling, just not to overfill your wontons. <music> Once you have your wontons all nice and wrapped up, you can wrap them in any shape that you want. We are going to take some of our avocado oil and we're just going to spray them before we put them into our air fryer. It just makes them nice and brown and crispy. But these look delicious. I'm gonna pop them into my air fryer for about 10 to 15 minutes until they are cooked through. And then I will show you the completed wontons and we'll load up my meal prep containers for the week. So I just put my wontons into my air fryer. This is the air fryer that I have. This is the Power Air Fryer Oven Elite. I love this air fryer. It is more like an oven. So your food actually goes in on trays rather than in a basket. So you can definitely cook more food. There's even another level here if you wanted to add a third tray. You can do rotisserie chicken in here. You can have use a basket and do vegetables or french fries. I love my air fryer. It is linked down in my Amazon store and that link is down in the description box. So I popped my wontons in there. We'll go ahead and get this closed. We wanna go ahead and get this going at about 375 and it's gonna automatically set it for 15 minutes, which is perfect. And this air fryer also has a light so that you can take a look at your food as it's cooking. So I will be back as soon as these come out of the oven and we'll get the meal prep container all put together. I just pulled the wontons out of the air fryer. These look so delicious, crispy, just like they were deep fried but not with just the flavor. So I'm gonna let these cool for just a moment and then I'm gonna go ahead and put everything into my meal prep container and then I will be showing you what my completed lunch for the week looks like. So here is my completed lunches for the week. I'm stoked to have this for lunch. So let me show you exactly what I'm going to be having. So here I have one fourth of the chicken fried cauliflower rice. That is going to be a total of three smart points. I also have four of my air fried wontons for another three smart points. In this little container here, I have half of a tablespoon, just shy of half of a tablespoon of the Trader Joe's soy yaki. So that will add an additional zero smart points. As soon as you hit a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon, it is one smart point. So I just made sure that I added just a little bit to a container here. To have with my lunch so i'm going to be having the cauliflower fried rice four wontons with a little bit of soyaki every day and this you guys is only six smart points for this entire lunch six smart points super excited very filling very low smart point i will probably pair that with one to two of the halos and then for dessert i will have one of my detour lean muscle bites i have these also linked in my amazon store below so make sure that you guys check those out. So this is my eight point smart point or eight smart point lunch. That's a tongue twister. Super excited about my lunch this week. For a snack this week and even for a sweet treat, I'm going to be modifying a little bit the recipe that I found on Jess's YouTube channel. It is called WW Journey to Healthy. She has a fabulous channel with excellent content. I would recommend if you haven't already that you check out her channel, but I'm going to be making coffee muffins. I am so excited. As you know, I love me some coffee. So let me show you what is in our muffins. So the modification that I'm making is I'm going to be topping my muffins with the really crumbly pieces of granola. So a lot of you have asked, what do I do with the powdery granola left 
at the very bottom after I've eaten all the big chunks. Well, my friends, this is a perfect use for that granola and that is to top your muffins with it for that nice crumb texture for zero additional smart points. So that is exactly what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna top my muffins with a little bit of the powdery granola from the espresso cluster. I do have a discount code for Julian Bakery granola. It will be here on the screen and down in the description box below. I'm obsessed with this granola. You can actually have two cups for only, or I'm sorry, half of a cup for only two smart points. So definitely recommend picking yourself up some pro granola. They have four different flavors to choose from, but today I'm going to be using the espresso cluster. You're also going to need a box of sugar-free cake mix. You're going to need eight ounces of strong brewed coffee. So I went ahead and pulled some Nespresso Breville Espresso out of my coffee maker. It is the best. I love my coffee maker so much. It is in my Amazon store as well, which is linked down below. You're going to need three eggs, some powdered espresso. This is the Nescafe Extra Dark Roast Espresso Instant Powder. And then you're going to need some non-fat Greek yogurt. So let's get going on our coffee muffins. To get started on our coffee muffins, the first thing that you're gonna do is go ahead and empty your box of sugar-free cake mix into a bowl. And we are gonna put everything into this bowl so it makes it super easy. You're gonna go ahead and add in your three eggs. You're going to add in your eight ounces of strong brewed espresso or coffee. And then you're going to add in one third cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. So you're gonna add that. And then lastly, we are going to be adding in our little packet of instant espresso. So we'll add that. You're gonna give this a nice stir and then we'll be ready to put this into our muffin tins. But this already smells amazing because you can smell that coffee with the sweetness of the cake mix. So I am excited. As you know, I love me some coffee. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all nice and mixed up and then we'll get ready to put this into our muffin tins. Once you have your batter all nice and mixed together, you're gonna go ahead and grab your muffin tin, either line it with a muffin liner or go ahead and spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. The recipe makes 20 muffins, so I'm gonna use a quarter cup scoop here and I'm just going to fill my muffins. I wanna make sure that I'm reserving enough for eight additional muffins. And then once we get our muffin cups all filled, we will go ahead and add a little bit of our Espresso Crunch Pro Granola to the top of each of our muffins. So we'll get these filled up and then we'll get these ready to go. Once you get your muffin tin nice and filled, look at how good these look. You're gonna go ahead and get out your pro granola. So make sure that you're getting just the small powdery pieces, none of the big chunks. And we're literally just going to put just a little bit on the top of each of our muffins. Remember the Pro Granola does have some nuts in it and some coconut flakes, which is just fine. I don't think it's gonna make any difference on top of our muffins, but we're just gonna get that nice little bit of crumble on top and then our muffins will be good to go. You're gonna put these in the oven at 350 until they are completely cooked through. I just pulled the coffee muffins out of the oven. Look at how amazing these look. I'm gonna let them cool a little bit and then I will show you what the completed muffin looks like. But these look so incredibly delicious. All right, here are our muffins. Look at how amazing these look. These are gorgeous and I just tried one and they are absolutely delicious. Two smart points, you guys two. So I highly encourage you to give this recipe a try. And here are my snacks for the week. So of course for my morning snack I'm going to be bringing my Built Bar. I have one of these every morning as my snack between breakfast and lunch. Keeps me full, satisfies any mid-morning sweet craving that I have. These Built Bars are only three smart points a piece. Built Bar just changed their discount program for the better. You can use the code here on the screen to save 10% and get free shipping on either the sample box or the full size box, whatever you prefer. You can even use it on the build your own box, 
where you get to pick the flavors that you want in your box. Super exciting. And the best part about the new discount program is you can use the code as many times as you want. So no more just one time usage. You can use it as much as you want. All of the information is down in the description box below, but these built bars are amazing for only three smart points. I'm also going to be bringing one serving, which is 28 grams of these Thinables. Okay, you guys, I'm a Cheez-It lover. I tried these. These taste identical to Cheez-Its. Identical. And you can have 30 crackers or 28 grams, which is this whole bag here. Let me see if I can get a better picture. There we go. This whole bag here of crackers, only two smart points. This amount of Cheetos is five. So super excited about the Thinables. This is going to be another snack that I have, and this is a total of two smart points. And lastly, I'm going to be bringing some baby carrots. I also have some little containers of hummus. This is the hummus. This is the Sabra red pepper. So I'm going to be bringing two points or two tablespoons worth of the hummus along with some baby carrots. So these are gonna be the snacks that I'm gonna be taking to work throughout this next week. Next, I'm gonna be getting my Skinny Kitchen Ranch together. This is incredibly easy. You're going to need a mason jar, ideally, because then you can just shake everything up and you don't have to dirty any additional dishes. You're also going to need some light mayo. I would suggest either Best Foods or Hellman's. You're going to need some buttermilk and I use two packets of the Buttermilk Ranch. There is less seasoning in the buttermilk than in the regular ranch, so I will usually add two packages, one and three quarters cup of buttermilk, half of a cup of light mayo, toss it all in your jar, shake it up, and you literally have the best ranch dressing in the world. So let me put it together and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so you've got everything in your jar here. I have my one half of a cup of mayo, my buttermilk one and three quarters cup, and my two packages of ranch. You're literally going to pop your lid on and you're going to give your ranch a good shake. And voila, you are going to have perfect buttermilk dressing. And there you go, perfect buttermilk dressing every time. Two tablespoons for only one smart point the lowest smart point dressing on the market and it is so good thank you for joining me on this week's ww meal prep i hope that you enjoyed all of the recipes that i shared with you today i am so excited for my breakfast my lunch and those muffins yum i cannot wait so if you are interested in the recipes that i shared with you they will all be down in the description box below so thank you for watching again if you're new to my channel make sure that you subscribe hit the notification bell. That way YouTube will send you a notification every time I upload a new video. I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. Comment below. Let me know what is on your meal plan for the week. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.